What's going on you guys? It's the Motorcycle Boss again and this time we're gonna be making this whole chain and sprocket assembly go from this to this. Subscribers, welcome back, and if you're new here, my channel is based all around motorcycle maintenance and saving money, so if either of those two sound interesting to you, go ahead and click that subscribe button, as well as the bell that's right next to it, and if you think about it, the worst thing that can happen if you subscribe is that you're probably going to learn something in one of these videos that's gonna help you save some money. All right, you guys, so first thing we're gonna do once we are getting ready to do this, we're gonna take a look at the different components that we have, it should be three. We're gonna have the rear sprocket, the front sprocket, and then the chain that you have. So you wanna make sure that they're all compatible. So we'll just open this up. This is gonna be the front sprocket. And this one is set at 17 teeth, which is what we're supposed to be at for this bike. It says the 17 right there. And as far as the pitch, it doesn't signify that it's the correct pitch, but it doesn't really show that there's any pitch, really. So once we get the front sprocket off, we're just gonna have to compare to make sure that it's all the same. So we'll set that off to the side. We'll take a look at this one. So we're supposed to have 41 teeth and I'm pretty sure that's what that 41 is gonna stand for. So we'll see if this signifies the pitch. My friend's the one that ordered all these parts and normally the pitch or the tooth count or something is off, but he wanted me to take a look at a few of the things, so it should be good. Uh, this one doesn't signify pitch either, just shows the tooth count at 41, which is accurate. So, and we don't, and I assume that the bolt holes are all gonna line up. So we'll get there when we get there. And this is the one that people mess up the most that I, I uh, made it a good point. This one is going to be the chain and this is at 130 links. I don't know if you guys can see that if it's too bright. But yeah, 130 links right there. So the bike comes with, it's supposed to have 110 link chain. So if you have more, that's fine. What I'm most concerned about is this master link. I'm actually going to turn down the exposure a little bit, you guys. One second. I'm sorry. Other way. I don't know if I did anything, but uh, so I'm trying to make sure that this is not a clip type and it's a rivet type, which it is a rivet type. And you can typically tell rivet types because they're not going to have a clip on them or a clip inside. These actually have the holes right there on each side. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah. So there's these holes right there. And then you're gonna have your your plate. So this is good. This is saying it has 130 links, but the chain that we should be cutting it down to is gonna be 110. Uh, color is just silver. I don't know if you can see that. So we just got a silver chain. All this grease and crap on it, we're gonna get that off. But this looks good so far. So. Now we got the parts take, you know, inspected. Now we are going to move on and start taking things off. Me personally, I like to take care of the, the front sprocket first. It's gonna be up here behind this cover. We're probably gonna have to take that white cover off first and then get to that front sprocket. All right, so, so far, they just took out this screw that was down here, this bolt. There's another one down here. These are these little rubber grommets that they're sitting in. And then there's one right up here that's in between you have two little pull pins right here that you just a little bit higher actually I'll, I'll show you sorry so right up here you just pull on this it pops out and then I'm gonna see if I'm gonna see if I have enough clearance right here to just pull this out of the way so I can pull this out this is just the cover that covers the sprocket and I actually took all the screws that were around it out so I'm gonna see if I can get it free now there's gonna be a speed sensor that's attached to it which is fine all right 
probably going to have to get to that speed sensor. So that way I can get this out of the way. So let me, I think this cover just pulls right off and then it's just a bolt that has the speed sensor inside. So let me knock that out. All right, so my solution that I did for the speed sensor and the uh, front sprocket cover is I just took a, a bungee cable. I just wrapped it around everything and then just let it hook inside. There's actually a couple of screws inside. Let me see if I can zoom that in. So there's a couple of screws in there to actually hold the other side in and that's where the speed sensor is. But if you just tie it out of the way, pull it out of the way, now we have access to the front sprocket. All right, so I don't know how well you guys can see this, but so we have the front sprocket that we're replacing and then we have the nut and there is a washer back here that we're actually going to press down because it's actually been folded over the side of the nut to keep that from backing off. So before we take this off to get to the sprocket, we have to push this down. And even though I'm using a screwdriver, you are not supposed to use a screwdriver. Get off my back. So I'll get back to you guys once we get this flattened out. All right, so if you guys take a look now, you should see that what was bent over has now been bent back. So if you guys have ever done this before, then you may know that this nut is probably the most pain in the ant, I mean, pain in the butt not to get off. So you can use regular hand tools like a, like a breaker bar, and then you can put something inside of the the rear tire as far as uh, the rear rim and the swing arm to keep it from moving as you try and turn this because if i put force on this this whole assembly is going to rotate so you can put something in the back so that way it stops it i'm going to use an impact yes i know this is not an impact socket oh actually i'll back you guys out i know this is not an impact socket i don't have an impact socket for this size on this bike it's 27 millimeter but we're gonna get that on there and then we're gonna get it off. All right, so I got something thrown in the back. I'll actually uh, move this a little bit so you guys could see. So I just got a like giant, I don't even know what you would call that thing that's like metal and heavy through the swing arm. So that way as I try to twist this, if the tire tries to move, it'll stop it. So, let's get back to this. Hopefully this will work, let's try it again. It did nothing. So, now we're gonna have to resort to a breaker bar. All right, same setup, but this time I got a breaker bar. Let's see if we can get it off this way. And before I go swinging on this, I'm gonna get a towel. All right, let's go. All right. Change of angle. I'm not playing, I'm gonna tell you guys, this thing's on tight. All right, you guys, sorry it wasn't recorded, but I do have this loose now. <sighs> Trust me, not easy. I absolutely hate taking those off when they're from the factory because they are just on ridiculously tight, like so tight. When you try to do this, you're gonna think that you're gonna break something on your motorcycle because of how tight these things are. So I started off with the impact gun, got nowhere. I took my ratcheting breaker bar, okay? And got nowhere. Normally, that will do it. 
Normally, a good size breaker bar will take care of that. I literally put every ounce of force I had into it and it was not moving. So, next option. I took the grip off of my breaker, my ratcheting breaker. So that way, this pipe that fits for my jack, for my car jack, I was able to get this to fit inside and I was able to get a longer reach. Then I was able to put almost all of my power in to finally get this thing to snap. Trust me, if you take this job on by yourself, that is going to be the biggest issue you're gonna run into is making sure you have a setup good enough to knock that out, knock that free. I was about to break out heat and heat it up, torch it up. I already threw a little bit of WD-40 in there, uh, some penetrating oil, and it just, you need lots of, and lots of leverage and do not try to take that off without having the proper socket. So now that we have this free spinning, we're gonna move back to the back of the bike and we're going to loosen up the chain get the chain nice and slacked up so that way we can move the chain over replace the sprockets all right so now we're moving to the back tire in order for this bike for us to loosen the chain we have to loosen that right there and there's another one on the other side as well we're going to loosen both of those and then we're going to put a tool into here and we're going to rotate everything so that way the axle gets closer to the front and that's going to put some slack into the chain Take this off. I'm going to take that washer off that was behind it. Now you're supposed to replace this after every use, but you don't have to. Honestly, this yeah, this side's a little beat up. That's fine. When you go to install it, just push another side in. All right. Pull this around. I'm gonna pop this off. Now keep in mind how that went in, just like that. And then this right here is gonna this says outside. So we're gonna do a test to make sure that this is the the replacement in that one that we got is appropriate. Alright you guys are gonna have to bear with me for a second. So this this is the factory sprocket that I just took out. Anytime you do a front sprocket replacement, you're gonna wanna do this. So we're gonna set that on top of a socket and we're gonna do the same thing to the new one. We're gonna set that on top of a socket that's the same height. Let me adjust the zoom in here. Okay, there we go. And what you wanna do now is you wanna look to see if the teeth are the same height. Now if you see right there, the sprocket on the right is slightly higher. So we turn it around when this is technically putting it on backwards. And would you look at that? They're the exact same height now. So keep in mind, it's supposed to go on typically with letters facing out. So it's supposed to go in like that, but because it's not lining up, we're gonna put it in the other way. So with letters facing in, it doesn't matter which way this is twisted, it's going to work either way. So now here's the other thing that's concerning. He had told me based on his own research that his tooth count was going to be 17. So this is a 17 tooth sprocket. This factory sprocket is 15 tooth. So I let him know that we ended up receiving a different one than the factory specifies. I looked at the service manual and 15 teeth is what it's supposed to have. And he said he wants to go on ahead with it with a 17 front and a 41 rear. So we're gonna install this one and I told him that doing this, going up in teeth, you're gonna lose low end torque, but you're going to increase 
uh, I would say performance at, at the higher end. I don't know if performance is the right word. More so that you're going to be able to do the same speeds at a lower RPM. So you're going to have a little bit more RPM headroom uh, when you do more teeth in the front. So let's get to installing this. I'll throw this in. I'm just going to hand tighten it and then we're going to go to the rear and we're going to replace the rear sprocket. already got the axle out. Now I'm going to pull the axle out of the other side. Set the axle down. And then just pull the tire back. It should come right out of the brakes. that's sitting here so the first thing I like to do when I get to this stage is I'll take this the new sprocket and I'll just set it on top and that tells me that all the holes line up I already know the tooth count is correct so now we're gonna take these off Now I have this set to low power. I'm just gonna run these down until they touch. I'm not actually doing this hard. Other way. All right, now let's torque them down. All right, service manual indicates these need to be tightened down to 44 foot-pounds. So, got it set 44. And then we'll start cranking down. All right, good to go. This is the funnest part. We gotta put this in. We gotta keep these spacers from falling out. We gotta make sure we line up this rotor to the brakes. So let's do this. This is probably going to take forever. Okay, that actually didn't take that long at all. So once we got it pretty much lined up, either you or a friend can feed the axle through. Use your feet to lift it up. Try to keep it as lined up as you can. Doing this by yourself sucks. Alright. Alright. Now you're just gonna wiggle it around fish it through. I've got the axle through now. I just gotta get it the rest of the way. It's pretty much like right here right now. Alright, so got it all in. Now we're supposed to torque this to 72 foot-pounds or pounds, feet, whatever you want to say. Done. Alright, now that we got that taken care of, we can loop the chain around and once we loop the chain around the new, the new sprockets, we can pull the tension back a little bit, and then we can fully tighten the front sprocket down. Significantly less pressure than taking that freaking thing off. So the small amount of research I did regarding a 17 tooth front sprocket, they did say that it will not fit without taking the guard out. So there's a little like chain guard in here so that way it, it sits right in front of the chain 
to keep it in line. And it doesn't really do anything for the most part. It's more of like a safety precaution, if anything. But this is what it looks like. I've already removed it. And now it's just kind of a test fit to see if this sprocket will even fit in this cover without issue. He wants to run with this, so we're just going to see that everything will work and be all fine and dandy, and we'll see how it goes. All right, so now I'm going to pick one of these, and I'm just going to grind one of the heads off just because that's the way I like to do it. Eye and ear protection. Now that it's ground down, I'm going to take my chain breaker tool. We're going to push that pin out. And that's how you break a chain. So what I do at this point is a little weird. So it's up to you. You can do whatever, whatever, whatever way you want. But I have a towel on the ground. I'm going to find grab one of the ends of the chain. I'm going to put it through one end. I like to throw it on the chain. We're on the sprocket. And basically, I'm going to thread it through the other side of the old chain. Just a zip tie. And I cut off the excess. The reason I do this is now I basically have one continuous chain and I can grab the other end of the chain and I can feed through the new chain all the way to the front. And once it makes its way full circle, I can find out how much I need to cut off. Now, keep in mind, what I also did is I moved the adjuster all the way forward and then backed it off a little bit and as far as uh, the tension I like to tension my chains at the most forward point but back off a little bit to give us a little bit of playroom so that's basically what I have it set at now and now this is where we're going to determine what we need as far as our tooth count so we're going to find out we're gonna basically, now that we have it through, we don't need this anymore. So we can cut this off. Get rid of that old chain, we're done with this. And now, we're gonna take this part and just make sure that this doesn't move. Cut off the excess. And then I'm gonna take the chain. I'm gonna pull it pretty taut. And try to get it onto this sprocket. And see where those two meet up right there. I'm going to zip tie this and that's going to tell me that that's the one I need to pop off. Right. Cut off the excess. Now we're going to do a test. We're going to tension the chain just to see how we are as far as our slack. Oh yeah, we got plenty of room. All right, perfect. I'm going to loosen up just a little bit. And now I know that's the one I need to cut, the one that butts right up next to that one. So I'm going to grind that pin down, push it through, and we're going to slam that master link in there. So I already started grinding on this a little bit and I forgot to record, so I'm just going to continue.
push that pin through just like we did before. All right, you guys, this is the final result. Beautiful silver chain, nice black sprocket, good contrast. Everything's been torqued down. I actually gave the chain a cleaning just to get rid of that excess grease. And that grease, actually, when you ride with it, if you don't take it off, it'll just splatter all over the place and it's just gonna be a big mess. So you wanna clean that up as soon as you can. Chain has been properly tensioned, everything's torqued down, and the fairing is also put back together. Everything's been back and assembled. About to do the test drive right now. All right, you guys, back from the test drive. This is going to close out the video. It's all taken care of. Could have cleaned the chain a little bit better. Still got a little bit of splatter up here, but nothing too crazy. That is it. Project good. So, and if you guys are looking at this video, this is a 17 tooth sprocket on a 2013 Kawasaki Ninja 1000, non ABS. So it does fit. I did have to take the bracket off. I don't, I didn't have it in with the bracket so, or the, the guard, so I don't know if it's required or not, but from what I've read online, took it off, just did the test drive, everything runs beautifully, it's like a perfect, perfect system. So that is how you guys do that. As far as how to, ch how to clean the chain, I do have a video on that that I will link in the description, as well as all the tools that I used in this video to do this job. All the links will be in the description so you guys can go ahead and pick your own up. And that way you guys can perform this job yourself. So good test drive, good bike. And I'm going to send this back off to the owner and he's going to have a good day. Hopefully he'll like the difference in, uh, in torque. All right, this is going to close out. I'll see you guys later. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.